Today you are going to learn the complete history of the Bible and understand both the Old and New Testaments, from Adam in the Garden of Eden to the death of Jesus' disciples. It all started at the beginning. Before the beginning, there was only God. He has never ceased to exist. He exists from eternity. He had no origin. He is the origin of everything. He was not created. He is the creator of all things. He did not begin to exist. He is the father of eternity. Eternity is an exclusive attribute of God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. On the sixth day, God created man in his image and likeness, and from man he created woman. Adam and Eve were created perfect, pure, and innocent. They had full communion with God and lived delighted in God's garden as stewards of God's creation. However, they fell into sin, and the entire human race was plunged into this abyss of total depravity because we were all in Adam. Adam and Eve had two sons, Cain and Abel. Out of jealousy, Cain killed his brother, becoming the first murderer and fratricide in history. Later, Adam and Eve had another son, Seth. Through him, a holy lineage began to emerge that turned to God. However, it didn't take long for the earth to be filled with wickedness and violence. God then decided to wipe out the man he had created from the face of the earth. But there was a righteous man, Noah. Therefore, God poured out judgment through the flood, saving Noah, his wife, and his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, with their respective wives in an ark they had built. Through Noah's sons, God restarted the origin of various peoples. Shem became the father of the Semitic nations, Ham became the progenitor of African and Asian nations, and Japheth became the trunk of European nations. Later, God chose a family to form the people who would be the instrument to bring the promised Messiah into the world. He called Abram from Ur of the Chaldeans. Abram left his land and his kindred and became a pilgrim of faith, raising altars to God wherever he went. It continued with Abraham and his nephew Lot, who became the father of two nations, the Ammonites and the Moabites. When Abraham left Haran, he was 75 years old. God promised that he would have a son, the son of promise, and would be the father of a numerous nation and that all families of the earth would be blessed in him. Abraham waited 11 years for God's word to be fulfilled. Then Sarai, his wife, no longer believing in God's promise, gave her maidservant Hagar to Abraham to cohabit with. Thus, Ishmael was born, who became the father of a numerous nation, the Arab people, the historical enemies of the people of Israel. When Abraham was 99 years old, God appeared to him and commanded him to go out of his tent and count the stars in the sky. Then he told him that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. But God also revealed that his descendants would be enslaved for a period of 430 years. God changed Abram's name, which means great father, to Abraham, which means father of a multitude. When the child of promise had not yet been born, Abraham was 100 years old and his wife Sarah was 90 when Isaac was born. Isaac married Rebekah, who was barren. After 20 years of marriage, Rebekah was healed and they had two twin sons, Esau and Jacob. Esau became the father of the Edomites and Jacob, who received the name Israel in his conversion, became the father of the Israelites. Jacob had 12 sons and one daughter. Through Joseph, the second to last son, Jacob's family moved to Egypt with 70 people. There, they settled in the land of Goshen, a fertile region. These 70 people multiplied astonishingly. After 400 years in Egypt, they left under the leadership of Moses with 600,000 men, not counting women and children, roughly 2 million people. The journey through the desert towards the Promised Land continued. What was supposed to take three months took 40 years due to the people's unbelief and the 12 spies who were sent to explore the Promised Land. Ten of them returned with a pessimistic report and incited and mutinied the people against God and Moses. Faced with the giants of those lands, they felt like grasshoppers and diminished the power of God. Then God punished them severely, condemning all those people to perish in the wilderness, allowing only Joshua and Caleb, the faithful spies, to enter the Promised Land. The people of Israel wandered in circles in the desert for forty years, one year for each day they spied out the land. The desert became the world's largest cemetery, where the entire generation that left Egypt perished, except for the two men who dared to trust in God. After 40 years of wandering, we have six years of conquering the land under the leadership of Joshua, but there was still much land to conquer. Joshua, Moses' servant, introduced the people to the Promised Land through a calling from God and extraordinary empowerment. After Joshua's death, a long phase of 330 years of theocratic rule began, called the Period of the Judges. It was a time of great spiritual instability and ups and downs in Israel's life. 
During the time of the judges, the people did as they pleased. Due to the hardness of the hearts of the people of Israel, they were oppressed by many enemies. In this time, God raised leaders of great stature, such as Gideon, Jephthah, Samson, and Samuel. After this long period, a new phase came, the monarchy. The people of Israel, looking at the neighboring nations, requested a king. The people no longer wanted God to rule over them. Samuel, the last judge, then anointed Saul as king over Israel. Saul ruled for 40 years. He began well and ended badly. He opened the curtains of his reign with humility, but later succumbed to pride, cruelty, and ultimately rebellion and apostasy. After him, David reigned in his place also for 40 years, transferring the capital of Israel from Hebron to Jerusalem. His reign was successful. David strengthened his kingdom and became the most prominent king of Israel, accumulating wealth, conquering lands, defeating armies, and walking with God, being a man after God's own heart. Despite sinning gravely against God, his family, and his people, he repented and was forgiven by God. From his lineage came the Messiah. After his death, his son Solomon reigned in his place for 40 years. He asked God for wisdom, and God gave him wisdom and riches. He became a renowned man in his time, built the temple in Jerusalem, and enjoyed peace in his reign. However, due to his many wives, his heart was corrupted. Only in old age did Solomon turn to God and repent of his sin. Thus we had 120 years of the United Kingdom. Saul fell into the snares of witchcraft, David into the trap of adultery, and Solomon into the clutches of idolatry. God granted the people's desire to have kings, but the people had to suffer the consequences of this unwise choice. After Solomon's death, the kingdom split because his son Rehoboam refused to heed the people's plea to ease the burdensome taxes. The pomp, splendor, and luxury of Solomon's government were sustained by the toil of the workers, strangled by exorbitant taxes. They took advantage of the transition of power to demand changes. As they were not successful, they could not align with the new king. Thus, ten of the twelve tribes conspired against Rehoboam and followed a new leader, Jeroboam, forming the northern kingdom, with its capital becoming Samaria. The northern kingdom lasted 209 years. This kingdom had 19 kings from eight different dynasties. None of these kings were righteous. All turned away from God and followed the ways of Jeroboam. This king decided to use religion for political purposes. Fearing that his subjects would seek Jerusalem to worship in the temple and become politically attracted to the kings of Judah, Jeroboam decided to build temples in the northern kingdom, in Bethel, Gilgal, and Dan. In them, he placed a golden calf and induced the people to worship it as if it were God himself. All 19 kings of the northern kingdom followed this path. All were wicked and perverse. None sought God. In that time, the Lord raised up some prophets to denounce the sin of the kings of the nation and the convenience prophets, as well as the priests bribed with money. In that time, God raised up the prophets Amos, Hosea, and Micah. They bravely confronted the nation's deviations from the palace to the huts, from rival temples to commerce, from the streets to the fields. They denounced political corruption and raised their voices against prostituted religion. They launched God's indictment against the corrupt executive and legislative powers. They denounced social injustice and economic oppression. They called the people to repentance, but their messages fell on deaf ears. During the reign of Ahab, through his wife Jezebel, the pernicious belief in Baal, the Canaanite god of fertility and rain, was imposed. Through her influence, the cult of the pagan deity spread, corrupting and contaminating the true worship of God. In those dark and decadent times, God raised up the prophets Elijah and Elisha. They confronted not only the king and queen, but also the false prophets. They were empowered by God to perform great signs and wonders, restoring the worship of the one true God and the truth of His Word. Despite the powerful ministry of these two men of God, the people did not repent, and the nation was destroyed and taken into captivity by the Assyrians in 722 BC. The southern kingdom, formed by the tribes of Judah and Benjamin, lasted 345 years. This kingdom had 20 kings from the house of David. Of these, Eight were righteous and walked in the ways of the Lord. However, even these kings were flawed. Among these kings, Hezekiah stands out, whose faith and prayers were powerful, and Josiah, who undertook a religious reform by destroying the idolatrous altars and leading the people back to the worship of the true God. Unfortunately, their reigns were interrupted by the people's persistent idolatry and disobedience. The Lord also raised up prophets in Judah to call the people to repentance. Among them were Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Zephaniah. They denounced the people's sins, warned of the impending judgment, and called for a return to God. 
Despite their warnings, the people continued in their ways, and Judah was taken into captivity by the Babylonians in 586 BC. The temple in Jerusalem was destroyed, and the people were exiled. However, God did not abandon his people. Through prophets like Ezekiel and Daniel, God continued to speak to his people in exile, promising restoration and a return to their land. After 70 years in Babylonian captivity, the people were allowed to return to their land under the decree of King Cyrus of Persia. Under the leadership of Zerubbabel, Ezra, and Nehemiah, the people rebuilt the temple and the walls of Jerusalem. The post-exilic period was marked by a renewed commitment to the law of God and the restoration of worship. The prophets Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi encouraged the people in their efforts to rebuild and called them to faithfulness to God. The intertestamental period, the 400 years between the Old and New Testaments, saw significant changes. Alexander the Great conquered the known world, spreading Hellenistic culture and language. The Jewish people experienced periods of oppression, such as under the Maccabean Revolt. This period also saw the rise of various Jewish sects, such as the Pharisees and Sadducees, and the development of the synagogue system. The New Testament begins with the coming of Jesus Christ, the promised Messiah. Born of the Virgin Mary, he lived a sinless life, performed miracles, taught with authority, and ultimately gave his life as a sacrifice for the sins of humanity. His death and resurrection provided the means of salvation for all who believe in him. The early church, under the leadership of the apostles, spread the gospel throughout the known world. The New Testament writings, including the Gospels, Acts, the Epistles, and Revelation, provide the teachings and doctrines of the Christian faith. The Bible, composed of the Old and New Testaments, is God's revealed word to humanity. It is the story of God's creation, man's fall, and God's plan of redemption through Jesus Christ. It calls us to faith, repentance, and a relationship with God. As you study and meditate on the Scriptures, may you grow in your love for God and His Word, and may your life be transformed by its truth. The Bible is not just a historical document, but a living and active word from God. It reveals his character, his plan for salvation, and his desire for a relationship with us. If you enjoyed this message, please share it with your friends and family and subscribe to my channel. May God bless you.